Welcome to Time Bolt Office Hours on October 19, 2023. You are live with Doug and Quinston. We are here to answer questions, check your workflows, and generally just make sure that you get the best out of Time Bolt. Today, what do we, we we have some customer calls. I believe we'll have some customers come in and we're going to be talking about the Vinci Resolve and the fastest way to export to Resolve and some of the issues that you might run into. Uh, the first thing you do is you obviously need to download the Vinci Resolve, the Vinci Resolve, and then you go to this website and then you can click on this button over here, which says free download. And then we'll ask you, you can select your operating system and then open DaVinci Resolve. It's going to load up and then you get like this screen which says untitled project. And I'm going to open it to create. Once open, this is what you're going to see. This is DaVinci Resolve. Personally, I like to keep it in edit mode because it gives you more real estate. On the media pool, you can do this and this. it gives you good control over it. Um, this is the media pool. This is where all your clips go. For exporting uh, cuts from Timebolt into DaVinci Resolve, uh, you have two main methods. The first one is XML. And the second one, uh, the one I prefer more is the integration. So Timebolt has an native integration inside of the Vinci Resolve, which you can directly use. But let's look at XML first so that we can just have a, an idea of what the timeline would look like. So I'm going to open Timebolt. Uh, in this tutorial, like I'm assuming that you already know Timebolt, like what it does at least. We're just going to focus on the Vinci Resolve connection. Let's say I have a, a file that I want to edit with Timebolt. I'm just going to drag and drop it. And as you can see, Timebolt has edited that file out. The way you would take a these cuts. So the concept is that Timebolt is going to cut up the file for you and you want to take those cuts and use those same cuts inside of DaVinci Resolve. And that's the whole point. So I'm going to go to the bottom. I'm going to click on this button over here, which says XML. And this is a, a button which is compatible with both DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. Oh, sorry. It's, it's compatible with both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. Both of those software have the same button. So I click on this and it generates an XML file. And the way I get to this XML file is just by clicking on it. And if I click on it, how do we get this file into DaVinci Resolve? So I'm going to go to DaVinci Resolve, right click on it. I'm going to select Timelines. This this is the media pool. You right click, or you can even go to file. We're just going to go from here, timelines, import, and it's the first option. So if you can see, there's an option called XML inside this import XML. Then I'm going to go to my, uh, go to where the, where Timebolt exported that XML file. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to click on import. Now what you're going to do is nothing. All you have to do is just come down here and click on resolve and that's it. Not You don't have to change anything else. The file will be automatically imported from the XML. The XML file has the link to where the file is, of where a media file is, and it's going to be directly imported. So I'm going to click on OK. And as you can see, the file was imported, a timeline was created, and the cuts are right here in front of you to start working with. And we had two tracks. The main file, the video MP4, had two audio tracks. So those two audio tracks, left and right, um, are basically separated out and kept here. Now, what if you have multiple audio tracks? This was a, a file with a single audio track with two channels. Now, what if you have a file with multiple audio tracks? I'm going to open Timebolt. I'm going to drag and drop a file which has multiple audio tracks. As you can see, if I go to select track section, click on this, it has three tracks, track zero, track one, and track two. And then I'm going to go to the bottom and click on XML. And click on XML, it gives me the same XML file. Like over here, it's a new XML file that's generated. I'm going to right-click, timelines, import, and then select the new file. Import, resolve, okay. So now this is a file that has multiple audio tracks. In total, it has three audio tracks. And as you can see, all three of them are populated here. Now, there are some instances where the tracks might not be populated. What you should probably do is uh, drag select all of them. I drag selected all of the audio tracks. Audio tracks. I right click on them, go to clip attributes. And then as you can see, you can select the channels on which those files are going to run. Um, channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, and channel six. Setting the channels so that the winch resolve is not confused as to which track goes on which channel. So track one will go on channel one. Track two will go on channel two. And if I press OK, as you can see, everyone is populated. Usually that's the case. Uh, there might be one more issue where if you're running into stereo, you might have, uh, if you have multiple tracks where which are stereo, then you can select uh, accordingly. Uh, but this is the, the extent to which it's going to happen. As you can see, XML has a bunch of issues. All of these issues and, and manual intervention is going to be fixed when we use the, the, the integration, which is what it was built for. Uh, one more thing that is an issue is that if you see, when I click on this item, it doesn't select everything. It only selects that one clip and they're not linked. So XML does not create a, a vertically linked column link. And the problem with this is that when you want to delete something, it doesn't delete just one. It, it, it doesn't delete everything. It just deletes this. The best use cases for XML is if you're using a single file. If you're using exporting one file from Timebolt, maybe a video file or an audio file, that's the best time to use XML because it's very quick and easy. But if you're exporting, a, you want to do multicam or multi-file, uh, then this solution is obviously lacking, um, which is why the, the Timebolt DaVinci Resolve integration, the extension is a much better uh, way to uh, get Timebolt cuts into DaVinci Resolve. So there are instances when people want to get incredibly uh, good audio quality out of the cuts of their video, incredibly lossless quality. One of the recommendations that we have 
is that you take the cuts from Time Bolt and quickly put it into DaVinci Resolve, that that can give you an incredibly accurate uh, control over your quality of video or, or audio. So for that, what you do is you click on this button over here, you click on XML. You, if you click on this button, it just opens up the folder of where the XML file is. You go into DaVinci Resolve, you right click, go to Timelines, Import, then Import that file. This is the file that we just got. I'm gonna import it and don't touch anything. Just click, come over here, click on Resolve, press OK, you get the cuts. And the way you render this is by clicking on Deliver and you can select H264 Master. You can select this file over here. Name your clip. I'm gonna say Output, just call it Output and browse for its location. I'm gonna put it in uh, this location. Click, click on Save. Uh, then we can select the format if you want. Uh, this depends on whatever you wanna control your file with. I'm gonna select QuickTime, H264 Auto. These files are perfect for me. I'm gonna click on Add to Render Queue. It says Start Rendering the Jobs. If you see, this is the Render Queue. And over here, you can just click on Render All because this is already in the queue. You can click on Render All and that's it. It starts rendering. And now we're gonna move on to understanding how the integration works. The integration in TimeBolt is very different than XML. It doesn't work like XML. So the way you get it is by going into this button over here, Multi-File Utilities, you click on it, take you to the Resolve integration page. Once that page, uh, once you see this page, you click on this button over here, which says download this file. So this is where the integration lives. You click on this button and it will download the integration for you. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go scroll and come down over here. For Windows, this is what you follow. And for Mac, this is what you follow. I'm on Windows right now. I'm gonna take this thing over here and it says copy the downloaded file to path. So this is the path where you wanna copy. I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna go into my file explorer. Okay, I'm gonna click in this box over here. It's gonna turn blue. I'm gonna delete this part and do a control V paste and press enter. Okay, please note, in order for this to work, you have to have DaVinci Resolve installed on your computer. If you don't have DaVinci Resolve installed, this will not work because this folder doesn't exist if it's not installed. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, basically take that file that I downloaded and I'm gonna put it in this box over here. Over here, I'm gonna copy it from other screen and I'm gonna paste it in here. The same folder that we uh, got from the path, that's where you kept the file that you downloaded from this link and that's it. Once you do that, if you go back into DaVinci Resolve, you should see something like this. If you go into workspace, if you go into scripts, pomp, you should see something called time bolt resolve inst integration. And when you click on it, it should start up. So this is the latest version of DaVinci. It should look like this. So I'm gonna just close this for now. I'm gonna go back into time bolt and I'm gonna show you how to export these cuts via the integration and and we can do a comparison on how that is so as you can see our file is already loaded up into time bolt and we have it over here i'm going to scroll to the bottom and instead of the xml i want to click on json because the integration takes json as an input json is essentially a communication text file you don't need to know more about that it's just a file that contains information about the cuts and the integration basically takes this information and makes the cuts for you in davinci resolve i click on this over here and it's going to show me where uh, that json file is so let's go back into our folder and take the file that you put into time the json file doesn't know where your media file File lives. So the media file has to be manually put into DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to take this video file and drop it into DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to create a timeline. The integration works in a way where you start off with a blank timeline with your media file in it. Okay, the file that you put inside of TimeBolt, that file should have a timeline created. Next, I'm going to open, I'll click on Workspace, Scripts, Comp, and the time a time bolt DaVinci Resolve integration that we just installed. Now it's it has a button over here, a big button which says apply JSON file. I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna find where that JSON was created. So for me, this was the JSON file, created mp4.json. I'm gonna click on open. And as soon as I click on open, it just starts working. So if you can see, the cuts have been instantly created. As an XML, you had to import the XML file. This is a, a different uh, method, but it's also very, very fast and much more reliable than the XML method. So what are the benefits of integration um, of the DaVinci Resolve integration? First thing is that as you can see, I made a mistake. Okay. You, you should cut it from here just uh make sure i have that link option selected this is link clips so why are these clips linked oh my bad i didn't click this button this this button essentially disables the link well i'm just gonna apply it make sure you mention that we'll be so what we'll do is we'll pick up where we left 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 off and then i'll explain that perfect so that people know if you forget where it's at you can also show people like you can find that path back in time bolt under render key yeah, yeah i use it all the time the ad advantages of using the integration is that as you can see when i click on this i'm going to turn it on so that the links are available the integration basically maintain these links uh between the video clip and the audio clip that when you want to delete them they get deleted together instead of getting deleted individually so instead of uh, getting selected individually, they can get selected as a unit or as, as a vertical column. And that's very important when you want to delete quick items in the timeline. Uh, alternatively, this is DaVinci Resolve integration is very useful if you have to essentially edit multi-file projects. For example, I'm going to delete everything that we just did. Okay. And I'm going to go into my, my folder and import two files. So these are two files that are, I just want to edit them together in time bolt. So I'm going to take them and bring them into DaVinci Resolve. Because as, as, as you can see, we have two clips. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to take this, drag it, create a timeline as is the first step, DaVinci Resolve. Then I'm going to take this clip over here and drag it on top of this other clip. And now you have two clips on top of each other. So I'm going to select them. Okay, drag and select them, right click, and I'm going to 
auto align these clips based on waveform. The reason this works is because the audio that's inside of these clips is is uh is very similar. Now what we do is we want to run these this file in Timebolt. Which, which 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 of these files do we run in Timebolt? Because Timebolt can run only one file at a time. We always run the file in Timebolt that starts first. In this case, the master audio file is the one coincidentally which starts first. That's the file which we run in Timebolt. Please note that you don't have to uh, keep the files um, close to zero. In in Premiere Pro, you have to do that. But in DaVinci Resolve, you can honestly keep the files wherever you want. But it's recommended that you keep them uh, hugging or uh, the starting point so hugging zero it's just to uh, just to make sure that you're not messing anything up so now because this file starts first i'm going to run this file called master audit mp4 in in time mode the goal over here is to apply the cuts that we have on the master audio file on the cam one file so i'm going to click on time bolt and i'm going to open up the master audio file because that's the one that starts first click on open and time is going to run the edit on these files so if i go through and see these files have been edited i'm just going to take some parts off i'm going to take this part off so so that it starts from and go to the bottom as the same step you click on json to give you the json file that you want to put in the integration and then i'm going to uh, find out where it is so it's over here i know where it is now so you go to workspace scripts comp time bolt resolve integration you get the integration and while you want to apply the integration you want to make sure that your timeline is open if this timeline is closed this integration will not work you have to have timeline open with the file synced up and ready to go and click on apply i'm going to find where that json file is click on open and now time uh, the extension starts editing and as you can see the edit has completed all the cuts are synced up and and now you can use them we just need to make sure that we make hard and fast rules for each one of these because some of them have frame rate matters some of them it doesn't i'm saying it yeah, true yeah it, it was working i don't know maybe do you have a do you have that girls project or another multi-cam project to no that's fine i think we can just like have a disclaimer that but davinci resolve integration you do not start projects unless the frame <clears> rates are all similar across your videos frame rate doesn't matter with audio and if that isn't the case handbrake it because otherwise it will go out of sync like this when you start a project like this you have to make sure that the multiple files that you're using do have the same frame rate if they don't there is a possibility that they might go out of sync so if you're dealing with a file that has 30 fps make sure that all the other files that you're using also are 30 fps if you have audio files uh, frame rates don't matter because audio files don't have a frame rate but uh, it might go out of sync it's always good to have all these files having the same frame rate so that they don't you know, go out of sync. One more thing that is very interesting and you have to keep in mind is what if you want to add more clips? Let's say you are working on a bigger project where there are audio files, media files, video files. So let's say I have like a bunch of files, right? So I'm going to just import a bunch of files that I have. I have one video file. I have one uh, audio file, a WAV file, and I have another file which has three different tracks. So this is like a big project. So these are like three different files with six different tracks. How, how would you arrange this? So let's say you want to no. run. You want to import the audio file first. Let, let's say. You can even do it in an, another order, but, but let's say we did the audio file first. Then I did a video file and then I did another, sorry, an, another video file. In this case, we have two audio tracks, one, um, uh, two audio tracks, uh, sorry, two video tracks and one, two, three, four, five audio tracks. As you can notice, one of these uh, tracks, V1, is empty and we didn't override that with a, with a video. Now, why is that? The audio.wave file doesn't have a video. So you need to make sure that you don't override this portion because when the integration is run, it might override this whole uh, place with a video and you don't want that. For example, if I do this, um, but first I'll, I'll have to unlink this. So if I unlink it and do this, if I unlink it and bring the video down, as you can see, V1 is now occupied. Uh, now, when the audio is run, this file will uh, basically overwrite this file, which is not not, not, not good. So when you have uh, multiple files, you want to do them in pairs. A1 and V1 is one pair. Uh, in this case, A1 doesn't have a video because A1 is an audio file. So you leave that space empty. Then V2, as you can see, V2, um, A2 are essentially pairs. That's one video file. And V3 and all these three tracks are pairs because this is a file with multiple audio tracks. So for example, if you have, if you needed to add one more, you can do this. You have to bring this over here and bring this to the bottom, right? Which means you will have to leave two empty because V3, V4 and V5 are, are occupied because of A2, because of A3, A4 and A5. You have to have pairs. You can't have a, a file at V3, uh, sorry, at A3 and, and a new video file at, at, at V3. So essentially you have to have pairs. I would uh, bring in all the files again. I'm going to bring in all those files again. I'm going to start with the video file, okay? Because that's the, the single video file. That's the easiest. Then I'll put on the multiple audio tracks. And then I have one space remaining, which is the, uh, just the video file. Uh, so, sorry, just the audio file. Oh, yeah. And for that, I'm just going to click on this and bring it at the bottom. At, at the bottom. And as you can see now, everybody is happy. And this A5 actually corresponds to V5, but we don't have to even deal with that because V5 is not even there. Yeah, you can work around it. Usually the best practice is not to start with, not to create the timeline with an audio wave file. It just gets easier if you keep it at the bottom. And then you can put the videos in the middle. And then how do we run the integration on this? In this case, I want to run the uh, time bolt algorithm on this file over here. 
because that's v1 a1 and they all start at the same time so it doesn't really matter which file you time bolt and we're going to run it on this if i open time bolt and i open that file i'm going to go and open that file over there the same file that's the first one and i'm going to the bottom and click on json it's going to create the json file and then I'm going to come back, open my integration. I'm going to open uh, workspace scripts, comp, dimensions of integration. Click on this. And I'm going to find my uh, JSON file. This is the, the latest one that was generated. And when I click open, it's going to basically run the algorithm on all those files. Yeah. So that's how this works. And as you can see that they're all synced because they have, they all have the same frame rate and the audio file frame rate doesn't matter because it's an audio file. So as you can see, when I click on this, these three are highlighted because they are in one file. When I click on this, this is highlighted because they're in one file. When I click on this, these both are highlighted. And then we have the audio, which is separate. I think that, that, that that's all. So that's how we use the integration with DaVinci Resolve. So to recap, we have XML files. We have integration. XML has its limitations. The integration is much more uh, stable. Uh, when you use the integration, make sure all the files are recorded the same frame rate that some files are okay with it. Other files cause issues. Some files go out of sync, but the best way to remain safe and make sure everything is in sync is by having files that have the same frame rate, 30 FPS, 29.97 FPS, whatever it is, but all those files have to be the same frame rate. And if they don't have, and if you're on your first project and this is your first project running through time bolt and you didn't know that all of them need the same frame rate you then go through and take the ones that the odd frame rate uh hand break them and that yeah. fix the sync issue okay perfect and, ju and just one thing that i wanted to let you know that if you can drag those two things together and, and select them all okay and then uh right mouse click and you see where you see where it says normalize audio levels because you know how one of your cameras the audio level is higher than the other one by using this oh, yeah. feature inside davinci resolve you can get your audio levels set up all to be the, almost the same but if you just hit that that, then you can see that they'll they'll come they'll come a lot closer. I use, I usually do like a, a minus five minus five point oh. Okay. Less audio levels minus five. And then when you then when you listen to them, you'll be able to hear, hear they'll be pretty much uh, the same for that. I got to so, be honest. Yeah, with you can... since, since you guys did the integration with DaVinci Resolve, I don't I don't do uh, XML for anything. Oh yeah, that's good. I just go to that. I just go to that uh, floppy disk icon and just save it as a JSON, and I do all my work from there. It works great. Awesome. There, do, there does look like there's some nuances with with uh, DaVinci Resolve that I, I wasn't aware of. That I think it's going to be good now that we've got them down. I can get it written into our features pages and just kind of update our content. Okay, you have to create a new timeline for the new one. What you need to do is instead of putting a file in this it won't run if you do it like this it won't run uh, you'll have to create a new timeline using the selected clips a new timeline create a new timeline is created now when you apply the json to the other file this would work so you can't apply the J the davinci resolve integration in the same timeline you can't do it like this for example again let me demonstrate oh, again oh, okay so you can't do it in the same timeline you have to create a new timeline to use the json integration again oh sorry the timeline integration again so i click on this the way we create the timeline is by dragging and dropping but technically that's not the right way it's a shortcut that the real way you do it is by right clicking and you create a timeline i'm going to say first timeline I created. Okay. Right click on the video again and create a new timeline. It says second timeline, create second timeline. So if I'm in first timeline, time, the integration basically takes a look at the active timeline and applies the JSON in the clips on the active timeline. So I click on apply JSON and I select this and open it. Okay, this worked. Let's try the second one. I opened the second timeline, apply the JSON. I didn't expect it to not work the, the other time. Third timeline, apply JSON. You have to create the timeline. And now if I delete everything, does that work? Delete everything. And I import another file, create another timeline, apply JSON. It doesn't work if you had an empty timeline before. Like when you apply it and then you have an empty timeline, delete everything, and then you have to close it and then start it again for it to start working again. But yeah, the, the idea is that it doesn't work on the same timeline over and over again. You have to create a new timeline completely uh, for the DaVinci Resolve integration too. Okay. And it's not a big deal. The, the way you, you get around it is by closing it and then starting it back, back up. And it should just work. There's also the new XML change for Resolve is extremely convenient. So thanks for that, but there seems to be an issue. The audio tracks seem to almost duplicate and become quite odd. For reference, the audio track that I selected in Time Bolt made my edits was not actually included in the import. Considering all my other audio tracks had no sound, I'm not sure which tracks are imported. It, additionally, not all of the audio tracks are linked. My recordings contain six audio tracks. When imported, there are a total of 12, and only six are linked together with the video. Yeah, they're, they're not going to be linked together. That's the whole idea where, where I selected all the tracks and assigned them manually. Okay. And if you want the audio tracks to be linked, you'll have to use the integration. That doesn't work in XML. XML. Okay, that's 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 what it is. It's he's not even using the integration it doesn't look like this is all xml interesting okay well i'm going to point him towards the the integration okay and it looks <clears> like <throat> we have brooklyn on the call brooklyn i want to make sure we get to any questions that you may have Are you joining us today or just kind of hanging out that's it for <laughs> time build office hours on october 19 2023 don't forget to hit the like button subscribe and of course the notification bell when we go live and we're out of time thank you